Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio here on blogtalkradio.com front slash Gypsy Poet. I am the Gypsy Poet, and of course, with me every week is the fabulous and magical and wonderful Girl George. Yes, people say it with me, Girl George, Girl George, Girl George. Oh, my God. How, what a blast this is. And we got a talent with us this afternoon and I was just enchanted when I first saw her photo on Facebook I was like wow I like this this is fabulous and especially with her holding a fiddle yeah now that is awesome anyways we've got the one the only Naomi Eisenberg everybody with me right right it's Naomi Ruth Eisenberg. Eisenberg. Yeah, yes. that's a little flat. I, I've I known really. Naomi for about 40 years now. Or she, she used to play with Dan Hicks and Hunt Licks. Now, I've known I've known him since he was with the Charlatans way back in the day. He was oh, a drummer. my God. And then he had his own <laughs> band, and Naomi was one of the Hunt Licks. And I went oh, to... Oh, that's When I was in Nashville, the me. first time I seen you guys play was in Nashville, and uh, some guy I met at the exit end and said, hey, come and see this band I'm working with. And hey, it was you guys. Hey, can we go back to the psychedelic era? Yeah, he when took me backstage to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> you remember <laughs> that? That's the first time we met. Hmm? That was about oh, that's 1973. We, we both had that in common. We both knew Dan. <laughs> 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 and then I see you again in, in in San Francisco after you know after all that national stuff was over. I was playing at Gulliver's and you started playing with me there. And after we'd been playing together for a while, you said, "Don't you remember when you met me? Uh, it was my boyfriend that brought you in to see us play." Which I didn't know. He didn't tell me he was your boyfriend. He was a sound man for the group. <laughs> oh well, that was the '60s for you. Yeah, yeah, sure was. Well. Yeah, that reminds me of Nashville and Chris Christopherson, which we both know. Oh, you know Chris, too? Well, I met Chris the day before Janice met him. Well, I met him right after Janice. So. <laughs> yeah, I met, I met him in Berkeley, man. He came out, He came down to our uh, garage studios where Commander Cody and Joy are cooking. And oh, Country I love Joe. George from Commander Cody. He's cool. He, he was on NPR last yesterday, and even Dan Hicks had an interview. Great. And, and leave it. And the DJ was the one that mentioned me and Marianne. Gave us a nice hype on. NPR, National Public Radio. <laughs> oh, that's well, you are the most amazing fiddle player I have ever seen. Well, a musician. Thank you. You've got this ear that you can just go with anything, even oh. my crazy shit. And my stuff is pretty oh, fucking crazy. Sister. And you just take off with it. The best video ever made of me in my whole life is you playing <laughs> with me uh, at oh, Al's honey, Bar. Honey. Uh, in 1990, and that's when I put in the movie. That's when it's up on on, on that right up in, in, in the Punk Globe. You were fucking awesome. You drove those people crazy. Well, my and sister, thought, she's a fiddle sister. and a mandolin and a guitar and a bongo would would rock yeah. out a punk club. It sure as fuck did. <laughs> yeah. Can you use that word like on the radio? Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, did Good we cut out? Like- Oh, no, we didn't, actually. No, we didn't cut out. No, no. I wanted to ask you, what got you started to play the fiddle? This is amazing to me. It's like, because I've, I've um, seen and heard some of your stuff, and I want, I want to know about you, about this, how about how you rock this instrument. So please, please, t- uh, talk Well, my sister gave about. me a violin, because she was mm-hmm. a classical pianist who would practice sometimes 24 hours a day. Wow. She, she was into it. She was a real beatnik, my sister. She went to Juilliard Music and Art. She practiced so much, and I didn't give a, you know, I hated discipline. I I was listening (laughs) to rock and roll, and and then she trained my ear, though, subliminally. Mm -hmm. So she gave me a relative pitch. You know, I I got it from my sister. Ha ha. Well, you have an amazing ear, because no matter where I went, you could go there and take it Take it further. You you could just go with well, anything, I, different types of music, different kinds. Well, you, I love you just go variety. with it. I love yeah, variety. you're amazing. I, I can't stand to listen to the same kind of music. That's why it's really hard for me to stick to one band sound, you know. 
<laughs> and when you were with uh, Naomi Vice, Naomi Vice, you were playing at the Mabuha, you, know, you had your, your own punk band there. And what other bands did you You had food and... Uh, Dancing was Food one was my first band in the 68. It uh, was managed by Bill Graham. It was around the time that Lydia Pence and Cold Blood had their, had gotten started. We did gigs with them. We did gigs with Santana, Sons of Chaplin. Oh, ten years mm-hmm. after, that was Dancing Food, and uh, I even and the Grateful Dead. Even I even got a poster of us with the Grateful Dead, but I don't remember the gig. <laughs> so it must yeah, have been I was back then. <laughs> what do we remember? I just remember anything? one of the gigs. One of the gigs I had to borrow um, David LaFlame's uh, rosin from "It's a Beautiful Day" because I uh-huh. couldn't find my rosin. And he was actually Dan Hicks's first violinist, he was. David LaFlame, before he started "It's a Beautiful Day." But he was in the same band as the guy from Charlie Manson. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? No, I'm not kidding. It's part of our family tree. Um, do you do you know Matthew Cates? Not te- Tex, but huh? Do you know Matthew Cates? Matthew Cates. Oh, Kate. the one that uh, he ma- he married. He managed uh, Beautiful Day, and yeah, he the one everybody these- hates. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh gosh, Moby Grape and all them. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna. I don't want to be sued. Yeah, let's so. not, listen, listen. Well, let's actually, not I there. like Matthew Cates. I knew him back then, and he was really nice. Charming, I never had no right? trouble with him. But it seems like everybody else in the world did, so let's not talk about that. Managers yeah. always, you know. <laughs> let's not talk oh, about that. Well, managers. that's what they call the middleman now. Yeah. <laughs> now that what the bands have hurt. you played in? What are all the bands yeah. you've played in? Oh, my God. What I played, starting with Dancing Food and then Dan Hicks, it sounds like I was into the Ds. Oh, Rubber Duck with... Oh, uh, you had Dada's too, didn't you? Yeah, but I had a band with actually one of the guys from The Grateful Dead and a guy from Country Joe called Rubber Duck and uh, my friend Joe McCord, who was a mime uh, mime dancer. And uh, it was really a cool... Then after that, after Dancing Food... Let's see. I can't. I'm trying to remember, man. My brain's getting thin. You know, I the smoke too much. You know. Did you have a band called the Dottos or something? Yeah, but that was way after the Tenderloin. Ten, I'm trying <laughs> to think of the progressive changes. You know, and uh, right now my my brain got frozen. Well, you don't <laughs> have to go straight through. You can skip around. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Dottos were cool. Now, Rick. Yeah, Jeff, we used to have uh, Sam Shepard in the audience with Michael McClure, the guy who wrote uh, Mercedes Benz for Janice. He was a poet. And uh, we had our spot in North Beach, and we sung about North Beach. And uh, Ricky became a pretty well-known uh, songwriter. He wrote, he writes for Madonna and writes for Stevie. He was in a band with Stevie Nicks and uh, Lindsey Buckingham mm-hmm. in high school. Because they all grew up in Los Gatos area, so you might say that's part of the family, the big family tree. <laughs> you know, well, you well, know. back in my, back my in the hippie too. days, any time you went any boutique in in, in Haight Ashbury or Head Shop or Poster Shop, yeah. you would hear can music playing on the radio. Or, I oh, but right Dan was all your songs I, He was going way over before the, I joined. I know, but the songs afterwards too. I mean, they, that's all they have played in North Beach was Dan Hicks and Hot Licks, and that was after you well, joined, people, too. People got crazy about that band um, because uh, it was like a thrift store. It was one of the first bands to make the thrift store look really popular, and everybody loves, you know, now they call them boutiques or what, retro yeah. or whatever, and they well, charge you. up the booty for for clothes. Uh, I remember know. I remember it was the sound of Dan Hicks going over over the sound system and the smell of patchouli oil and and <laughs> soundwood. <laughs> Actually Dan Dan sound didn't really get popular until after the psychedelic era was over. But although he, the band that he was in before that was the Charlatans now that was during the psychedelic era but sixty nine man the psychedelic era was over by then. Well, people maybe it was over getting... for you, but it was just starting for other people. 
It didn't hit Nashville until 1971, you know. I mean, it, it spread very slowly across the world and around the well, world. Well, you should have seen the hate. Oh, you remember the hate in 70s. Yeah, it was horrible, man. It was horrible. All the tweakers had come in. In 71, all the windows were boarded. Well, then you just go and, back to North Beach. You don't have to stay there. You go back oh, to I North Beach and the coffee gallery and Rico's. Oh. I probably ended up in a sleazeball hotel in the Tenderloin, knowing me. And I had a band called the Tenderloins. <laughs> that was <laughs> a terrible name. You could get killed there. Yeah. Are you playing with any bands now? Um, pretty much doing solo. Uh, I've got a bass player I jam with, David Lucas, who's from the Bay Area, was born in uh, what's a hospital in Berserkly, Uh <laughs> yeah, and we sometimes get together right now. It's great. We, you know, we play. We played for this convalescent home, people with Alzheimer's, and we could keep playing the same <laughs> song like the Grateful Dead, and they'd never know. <laughs> now one of them comes up, he thinks I'm her daughter. You know. <laughs> what can I tell you? Oh. Where are you it's, from originally? Um, you know, I do all mics. I, you know, open mics, and on occasion I do some festivals up here. It's awesome. It's That's very good. hot right now, and all. Yeah. yeah. People that go Where to Where are you from originally, right? Naomi? New York City. I was uh, born in the Bronx, uh, Brooklyn, and I was born in Brooklyn. We went to the Bronx for a little bit where my mom used to babysit for Shari Lewis, the puppeteer. Oh, uh-huh. oh my goodness. Yeah, her father, her father taught her ventriloquism, and then we moved to Queens, you know, home of Cindy Lauper and uh, the Ramones. We moved to Queens, <laughs> and then from Queens... We we moved to Manhattan and lost our accents. <laughs> and then from Manhattan, my mother put me on a plane. You know, mm-hmm. things were great then. The kids ran away from home. Now they come back home and you can't get rid of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> my mother yeah, we put ran me on away a plane. at 16 back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I got too much in trouble in New York. I was having a good time with the Puerto, Puerto Ricans <laughs> and the... And smoking my whatever, but, you know, I got popped. So my mother puts me on a, a plane to avoid drugs and sends me to Berserkly. <laughs> oh, great, that was a smart idea. <laughs> oh, 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 when I found Telegraph Avenue, it was a candy store. Yeah. It was what a year candy did store. you hit Berkeley? What year did you hit Berkeley? 66. Wow, the year that before was perfect the, timing uh, to come out here. Yeah, I mean, people, you know, all the psychedelic bands. And, you know, whenever they talk about psychedelic scene and everything, they always say the San Francisco scene. But I get so mad because a lot of these bands were from the East Bay, and they never did. Yeah, def- yeah. Freedom's Clearwater was from here, and uh, so was... Uh, Commander Cody was Berkeley. Yeah, they are, yeah, yesterday they said he was from San Francisco. I don't know. I guess, you know, well, they, 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 they talk about the whole area as being San Francisco, Berkeley, Oakland, San oh, but Francisco, was, San Mateo. They call it all San Francisco. Yeah, but they what they do is they gentrify everything. They don't realize yeah. that from one year or another, we had different inches up from our knees with our mini skirts. Things changed in a <laughs> You know, you got to get to the details if you're going to be a good um, historian. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you got to, you know, or else. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm, I'm particular because I guess I was there, and the people we're particular. We're we judgmental if we so were there. So you live in Chico this. now, right? Yeah, and it's hotter than hell, Satan's yeah, hell, I right? Now. <laughs> it's cold here <laughs> right now. Huh? Yeah, but it's it's affordable here right now, and yeah. I like the scene because I was up in the woods for a while. I did that. I really love it. Really love it. I wish I had oh the ability to stay in the woods and just <laughs> what is because you know well, I'm just, I was you gonna, know I'm just not huh I was going to ask what kind of a, what other influences do you have. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Well, yeah. I had uh, folk influences. I have, mm-hmm. you know, classical. I, and then I have mm-hmm. the whole gamut, man. Because I lived, I, I feel like I came of age mm-hmm. 
before that I was into Doc Watson and stuff. Then I started listening to jazz, and I was listening to mm-hmm. Motown in New York City. When I came, uh-huh. uh, I was starting to listen to the Blues Project. And that was my first experience with electric band in New York. And then I mm-hmm. came out to the West Coast, and everybody was electric. Mad <laughs> River, the Crabs, all these uh, cleanliness and godliness. Everybody had gone electric. Went by the time I got to to the uh, Bay Area, everyone was messing with electric, and somebody I didn't get I didn't go electric with my violin until '68. Hmm. You know. What kind of work did your parents yeah. do? What did your parents do? My mother was a registered nurse. She was also worked as a director of summer camp. <laughs> of a, the summer oh. camp, yeah, and she was the nurse up at summer camps, and she worked as a nurse at uh, the mental institutions there <laughs> in New York City. And oh, she was oh she uh, she was great. She was We're an about excellent your nurse, mm-hmm. a CPA. And what did your father do? CPA had an office on Lexington Avenue, and you could see down fifty-two floors down the. The elevator, the glass elevator, used to give me, you know, vertigo, but I loved going to my dad's office. He'd take me to Katz's Deli and Orchard Street down the Lower East Side, you know. And when we moved to Manhattan, we were right near the village in Chelsea, and I was 14, so that was really awesome for me. Awesome. Yeah. You you've lived in many places that I've that I've seen and heard so far. I wanted to ask: Is there a particular place that you feel the most at home at? Creatively, um, never. Uh, on the road. On the road. <laughs> on the road, and I wish I did that more often because when you're settled down, you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I, I feel the same way. Yes, <laughs> we, we're, we're on the same. Yes, you and you and me right now, we are on the same page. So I understand oh, where you're coming from. My kitties yes. are just. Yeah, my kitties <laughs> are destroying my house. They must know I'm on a show or something. <laughs> so how I'm did not... you start playing with D and Hicks? By the way, what you yes. do? You just met them. Um, and said... My band had kicked me out of the band, and they because. Oh, they wanted to go country. They thought that was the newest thing, and they, I, you know, they thought I was a brat. And so, like, you know, uh, one day I'm like it, it, in this like little shack I was living in, and I hear I scare myself, and then I heard that Dan was looking for. It's weird because when I heard that band, I thought, <laughs> now that's a band I could play with. Because he had other versions of that band before I joined. Oh, it's yeah, just that I he heard didn't. Him. Yeah, yeah. He just didn't get that well known until that. My timing was everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that, I went, as soon as I heard he had an audition, I went to Sausalito. I set an audition up. He didn't like me the first time. And then he calls me back a couple months later. And I came, instead of looking the way I did like a hippie, I came looking like a topless dancer, which I was doing. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that put a whole different perspective on it. And so, um, and he had already gotten, you know, Marianne said, this is the one. We were the right size, and we blended together. And the first gig we did was for, I want to be politically correct now, Mm -hmm. you don't call them mentally challenged people and I thought oh, oh I could see that being in this band's going to be special <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. guys danced and everything and you guys had a huh? backdrop of, of what Hawaiian trees oh yeah that was actually the, one of the, I believe that was one of the original um, drops that they I think Dan bought it from some people down in Hollywood for a from a Bob Hope movie it was mm. that scene where you have palm trees in the, you know, one of his Hawaii old time movies, and, and we kept a writer where work. they had to bring in palm trees right whenever he played. <laughs> well, yeah, we had that on the contract. That you know, some people during the rock and roll days, some people wanted yellow uh, M and M's, but we wanted palm trees, and we actually <laughs> had that in our contract. 
And, and you we guys dance? Some... You have such cute dance. Did you practice them or did you just go with it? Oh, we definitely choreographed, you know. We definitely, uh, well, Dan did a lot of the dance choreography, but that we, you know. That was funny, that one of you on the Flip Wilson show where he jumps up like a frog. <laughs> Well, that's the thing about Dan, you know, people like his awkward charm. Yeah, he's kind of funny. Well, yeah, that's, you know, I think that's part of his his act. <laughs> you know, he's got some very funny songs. And uh, another person that you and I both like, who I had the pleasure of living right next, or squatting right next door to, was Shel Silverstein, great songwriter. Oh, and, oh hit and home. Yeah, I, hit home. <laughs> Yeah, and then I got to meet um, Willie Nelson and many other really excellent songwriters when when oh, I got down I to love Austin. Willie and... Nelson. Oh yeah. my Did you God. ever meet Shadow Morton? Shadow Morton? No, but He's I met David Allen Poe. Leader of the Pack. You know who he is? He what? He wrote the Leader he wrote of the Pack. Leader of the Pack. The Leader of the Pack. Leader no, of the Pack. No, but I met. I wrote Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> like a virgin, like yeah, a virgin, just... <laughs> touched by the very first time. Yeah. So, so did um, you hang out with Shell any? Shell's ever seen any? Oh, he scared me. I told you, remember, he scared me. His bald head scared me. <laughs> and I was much younger than his generation. But, but Jamie from Hot Licks ran into his mother in Chicago who had a thrift store. And she goes, you must know my my boy Sheldon, if you know, if you live in Sausalito or Mill Valley or whatever. But you know that whole area was so different at that time, and we were all squatting, and there were some wealthy people around, but not so many like back then. You know, a bunch of hippies could live in a house, pretty cheap, even in Marin County. But that's yeah. like totally impossible now. You know that. Yeah, the you dot know, com uh, computer people kind of outpriced yeah, or everybody. Or world stars that um, had a good momentum <laughs> that, that got their pensions and their. <laughs> I want my pension. Good luck. I love this town in a way other than the weather because there's so many bleeding hearts. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a it's a good town, you know. It's 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 a good town. What can I say? You gotta come down so, and visit me sometime. Play with me. I hate going. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend people, but I just don't like going to the Bay Area anymore. Why? Um, oh. It it just makes me all tense. It's too crowded, and it's it makes me sad because you know when I was king there and I lived on top of the hill. You know, I don't want to go back there and have to do the tenderloin, you know. <laughs> well, I never did the tenderloin, so. <laughs> oh, I did. There was some parts of the, the line. Everything is a novelty when you yeah. first do it, but when you find you have to be there, it's no longer a novelty. No, that, that was too scary for me. I always lived in oh, the well, hills. My sister Bonnie lived up in the hills. You know, uh, and, and uh, Daly City, so I say with her. And now my daughter is written a house up in the hills, uh, and in, in above Berkeley. Awesome. So I'm always in the hills, surrounded by trees, living at somebody else's house. Well, I was I a pay city rent, girl, but it's, it's their know, place. I became a city girl because I was used to New York, and I like when I was younger. I liked the city, and I liked all that. Hmm. Perversion and crime and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> no, it was different, you know. When you feel like you're you're kind of sheltered when you're younger, when you get older, you know. It, it's I think opposite lifestyles attract, you know. Then I got mm-hmm. fed up with it, and I just want to live a good life and be around trees. So I moved up north. Well, my house is surrounded by trees, but then I'm five minutes from downtown Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. But so I, I got the best of both worlds here. Yeah. Thanks to my it, daughter, it, Wendy. You know, Wendy kind of got it together with her husband. Thing. 
That's a wonderful thing, but I'm also, in my own perspective, I kind of like being in a smaller town now. It's just different. It's just mm-hmm. different, you know. Yeah. Um, like I say, I, I've had some pretty good memories of San Francisco and Berserkly, and it's like if I went back there, it would be too anticlimactic, you know. <laughs> plus, I, plus, I have to live in the limelight of Dan. You know, you don't know when you're pigeonholed. You end up doing an interview about a band that only took a certain amount of your time, and but there was so much more before and after. Well, what about <laughs> so Naomi Vice? Can we can we talk yeah. about Naomi Vice? That band you had at yeah. the Mabuhai? Well, I had a couple of bands at the Mabuhai. Yeah. I had the Dog Dogs. Mm-hmm. I had um, a band with uh, Rocket Morton from Captain Beefheart. And the drummer of um, Chris Isaac, Kenny Dale, when he first came out here to California. And that was a cool band. We were managed by a man, a guy who uh, worked with Holly Woodlawn, uh, Drag Queen. And... <laughs> oh, and then there was the Don't Forget the Cockettes era. <laughs> Speaking oh, yeah. of Drag Queen. And Freaky Ralph. You remember Freaky Ralph? Oh, Ralphino, yeah. yeah. I loved he, Ralph. He set himself Dude, on let's fire. Let's get stupid. Let's get stupid was his big one of his big hits, I remember. Did you know he it set himself first... on fire in front of the bank? Oh yeah. I went to see him in the hospital with Dirksen Ooh. right before Yeah, I think that's something that's supposedly popular amongst comics. Look at Richard Pryor, you know, he set himself yeah. on fire. <laughs> well, he did it accidentally when he was doing drugs. I know. Drinking yeah, around dumped a, uh, a gallon of gasoline on his head and set himself on fire in the middle of the street from what I hear. Right in front of the uh, Holy City Zoo where Robin, uh, what's his name, Robin? Robin got Williams? His, uh, yeah, got his start on Irving Street. That used to be like the comedy mecca. There were a few comedy clubs back. Oh, and it was at one time it was the Fern Bar Mecca on Col- Clement Street in the uh-huh. 70s. It was the Fern Bar Mecca and the Pickup Mecca, <laughs> where singles would go. You know, straight singles. Well, I yeah. played the Holy City Zoo. That was a cool place. Oh a little yeah, tiny place, was... but it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, it sure was. It had well the comedy comedy scene and there was a big comedy scene in San Francisco for a long time you know it was starting to flourish in the 70s now you know now it seems to be coming back you know we're going to have Mike hey. Wilhelm on the show next month you know him don't you yeah. never met him before Mike who Wilhelm we'll oh. have videos of you playing with him <laughs> the charlatan one of the charlatans no, I know Mike. He was also in the Flame and Groovies, and he, yeah. he, he mm-hmm. had a he coffee shop for a while up the block from me, and we had a little band with Captain Colors, this dude who did the um, one of Rocky Erickson from uh, 13th Floor Elevator. He did one of his album covers when he had Rocky Erickson, I think, and the Explosives or something. But uh, Captain Colors, yeah, I don't know what happened to him. So, uh, but Mike, yeah, Mike and uh, uh, Rosemary, or uh, his wife, I forget her name. But that's we, cool. That's, uh, he, they played at the Red uh, Red Dog Saloon along with Dan. I guess they played for all those guys that were in the Merry Pranksters. Yeah, that and was in I, Virginia I, City, was it? That's a different Red yeah, Dog than the one I, in Nashville. Yeah, I consider myself almost the second wave of musicians because, you know, like the Airplane and Janice and all those people had a couple of years. They were a couple of years ahead of me, even though I was still playing music. I wasn't really officially in any band, electric band, until 68. So I was kind of a Jeanette come lately, but... You know, there were like there weren't that many ba- uh, violin players. It was me, David Laflame, and um, Peskin, this dude from a group called Shiva's Headband. And then, you know, we had our Texas transplant. Papa John Creech. Wasn't there a Papa John Creech or something like yeah, that? Yeah, but I don't know if he. Had, I don't know if he was playing that early. No, he, he was been... later with the Grateful Dead or the Airplane or, or something. He was actually Starship. 
think on the air. I don't know if he played with the airplane, but I know he. I think he played hot with tuna. a starship. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, Hot Tuna too. Yeah. I played in a. I played in a band with a guy from Hot Tuna in '68. It was. Um, Called the Floating Lotus Magic Opera. It was a combination Tibetan uh, acting along with Tibetan music, psychedelic music. It was pretty trippy, and we used to perform in Live Oak Park in Berserkly. Well, yeah, it was pre- great talking to you, Naomi. Our yeah. time right, is up. Cool. Well, yeah. cool. When do I? How do I? I want to hear this. Do I tune okay. in? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah I'll send you the stuff on the web. Awesome. <laughs> well, okay, but since we do folks. have a little bit, since well, but I want to ask you. It's two thirty right you now. This is the end, mm-hmm. my friend. Yes. This is the end. Yeah. Facebook, Naomi Eisenberg. Mhm. And oh my God, thank you everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gypsy Poet Radio, Girl George. It was a blast, Naomi Eisenberg. It was an cool. awesome Sunday afternoon with you. You really uh, brought a uh, fun. Yes, you. Yeah, yes, I think I'll go take really, some LSD now. I'm in oh the mood. Oh my God. I see a little like after I saw the Doors movie, I felt like that. <laughs> it was a great show. Oh, Say good night, Grace. A lot of history. Oh, yeah, good so- night, good night, Paul, Gracie, and Paul, right? Paul Kantner. <laughs> good night, George. Good night. Good night. I love you. Right. Love yeah, you, call baby. Call me. Write oh, me on Facebook. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. This is the Gypsy Poet with Girl George signing off saying adios for now. Ciao.